Hey there, and welcome to the second video in our series looking at how you can set up your own animation business. In the first video, we looked at how you can gain the experience um, when you're fresh out of college or university and how you get your first step into the industry to level up your skills before taking the leap into running your own business. Okay, so taking the leap. I'm going to assume that you've been working at a video production company for a number of years or you've been freelancing directly for design houses, media companies, and you've built up that skill set and you believe in the quality of your work professionally. It might be that there'll be some sections of business that you don't yet have a good understanding of, and perhaps the accounting department, um, the intricacies of quoting um, business marketing strategies. And these are all things you can learn. You're not expected to know all of this straight away, but you're going to have to learn it very quickly and be willing to read up on it. The thing that will kill most startup businesses is lack of cash flow, um, especially in the first and second years. So, you know, yes, you're going to win business, whichever way you end up marketing yourself, but there will be peaks and troughs, um, highs and lows with work, and maybe you're taking a big project and it's going to be great, but the client's very slow at um, paying up, which could get you into difficulty. So you need to have a little nest egg that you can lean on. Um, so whether you want to save up the money beforehand, um, perhaps you have uh, you know, a rich aunt, uncle, family, friend member who's willing to help bankroll your business to start up. Um, uh, lastly, there's obviously a credit route you could take. You could get loans from a bank um, or use credit cards. And not that I want to condone necessarily getting in that sort of debt, but they do serve a purpose. And if you know there's a payment coming down the line, why not use a credit card to get you through that difficult period if you're 100% sure that you're going to be able to pay it off um, relatively soon. Okay, so with that knowledge in place, you'll no doubt have a reason why you want to set up on your own. It might be that um, you want to earn more money and you've seen your bosses are doing quite well and you can see that you're doing maybe 75% of the actual tasks and you just think, if I run my own, I can win some of that business. Maybe I haven't even got to charge as much as they charge and I'll be earning considerably more than I am at the moment, which is a very sound argument. Um, it might be you want a better lifestyle. You want to move your young family from the city you're working in to the suburbs, um, set up a small studio on your own. Um, and lastly, maybe you want to differentiate the sort of work you've been creating. Now with all that in place, you've got your reason for doing it, better lifestyle, more money, more varied work, and you've got cash flow sorted for the first three months. Um, you know, you want to make sure your mortgage or rent, lifestyle, household bills are going to be covered. You'll also want to have a strong portfolio of work. So ideally your old employer would be okay with you um, using some of those productions in your portfolio. Um, if not, prior to setting up your business, perhaps do some freelance jobs on the side for other companies. So that really is it. You have the money, your goals, the quality of work's already there, and ideally having some examples you can use to help win business, um, drive leads, um, and help your business succeed. Okay, thanks for watching. Hopefully this has been some help to decide whether or not you're ready to take that leap into running your own business. Um, if you've got any other tips, feel free to put them in the comments below. And I'll see you in the next video where we discuss gaining leads. I've been John Draper. This is Stormy Studio. Thank you.